Hi, I'm Jennifer Branch. Today for Halloween, I'm going to paint something I've been wanting to paint for a long time. A beautiful full moon. Happy Halloween. I'm painting on twin rocker paper. The handmade paper stands up to a lot more abuse than regular mold made paper. It's the regular stuff is good for everyday projects, but if you're going to attack it with your brush, then you want to stick with the handmade paper if you can possibly do it. I'm using a little bit of wax crayon on top of that wash, and um, that'll pull out a couple of the stars and a couple of the scars from the craters that reflect so white. I'm starting with a squirrel brush because it it's very very loose and I want those soft fuzzy hairs I, I want everything very very loose to start because you know we're basically looking at a cutout of a moon against the dark night sky um, by the way we took this picture with our 8 inch Dobsonian telescope in our backyard so I've been wanting to paint this for a long time I'm using some cobalt violet, which is a new paint. I haven't used that in a while. It's just, it's got the soft graininess I want for this painting. The background, by the way, is ultramarine blue and thalo blue, just in different layers. Now I'm going to want the background, because there is that deep shadow around the moon, I want the background to blur into the edges and I will go back and redefine it. I'm also wanting a very clear translucent background, um, so I'm not using burnt sienna like I normally would to darken something to the night sky depth. I'm using some maroon perillon which will be a clearer, more transparent dark. But I do need that strong dark. I'm wanting it very cool and the, the moon is going to be much warmer. I'm going to drop in some uh, azo yellow and also the cobalt violet is a very light color. Okay, so I'm just playing with this. I'm using my spritzer, I'm splattering paint. I'm, I'm having some fun on this painting. Blurring those edges. This is nickel azo yellow when you do not clean your water out. You caught me. But you can see what a difference it makes. So I'm blurring some of these edges. It doesn't matter if it's if it's messy right there. Um, because I'm going back and redefining them. Pulling it out a little bit, but it gives me that nice blur. So we're warming up the moon and cooling down around it. And as you can tell, the most distinct thing on the moon is that giant crater. Um, and that's the last thing that happened, the last big event, and it shows. So that's the last thing I'm going to want to paint. And I'm going to paint dark all around it and then pull out the scars from the craters. Now the ultramarine blue and all this is mixing together and doing some really neat texture. I'm still painting very loose, so I'm still using my scroll brush. Nothing is too accurate. I did draw it very accurately because it's the moon. We look up, we know what it looks like but it's going it's a very loose painting all right you can tell i splattered some nickel azo yellow in the background just to give it a little bit of movement and i'm just going and darkening it's several layers you can tell this is dried and um so it's several layers to get it the depth that i want it back there the wax crayon, you can tell that that's, uh, all those have come out. Sorry. 
So I'm just going around and darkening it and trying to disturb as little of the previous layer as I can. You know, very light movements. The natural hair brushes are good for the lighter movements. So you're just letting it move and paint around and let it flow together. You're letting your brush dance over the painting and it's so much fun. A little bit cooler up here in the upper left corner and the bottom right corner. So more ultramarine blue there and that's just to balance it. It really in the picture it's completely black but I like the idea of endless night and it floating in space. Really beautiful. So it, it takes a lot of paint to get that deep. And as you know from my, my mixing paint video, it takes layers and layers to get it the deep dark. So I told you I'd redefine that edge. So it's, com it's completely blurred. Couldn't tell where it ended. I let it dry completely. Redefine. Just flowing over this. And here's how that dries. This is layer upon layer dried. So I'm pulling out a little bit of paint with a wet, soft, clean rag. And just blurring that edge one more time. You wouldn't have thought after the first go I'd have to blur it. But I'm blurring it all around. And softening some edges. And now, some, now I'm really starting working on defining the different features of the moon. So a little bit more detail. So I'm using the sable. And I will go back and blur and define and blur and define. It's a very simple palette. Uh, the moon is almost black and white. I've upped the colors to the max. These are colors that you can find on the moon, but generally much paler. So unless it's the orange moon, blood moon. So just nickel azo yellow, some phthalo blue, a little bit of uh, cobalt violet, and laying them blur together. So you can see it's kind of a warm image. But, you know, black and white would be less fun to paint. Still going to go and redefine some edges and just drop the paint in. Really do let your brush dance, let it move a lot. Now after it's dried and I've softened a couple of those edges again, I go back with clean water and soften them more. A little bit of cobalt violet just barely there. those craters in. This is nickel azo yellow mixed with a tiny bit of maroon perlin. So it blends with the, the background. And you can tell that didn't turn out red much at all in the background. It's just a very deep blue. The phthalo blue because we have those reflected shadows from around. And that's a area I waxed with, I just want the crater to pull out very easily. Couple areas that I knew needed to be white. All right, here is pulling out the scar from craters and I pull it out with clean water and then I blot it Pull it out, blot it, pull it out, blot it. 
So this is a little bit more time consuming. This painting took me um, an hour and a half of steady paint and weight and paint and weight. Um, Cause see, you need to, for it to dry because if something's going to be on top of all the other stuff, then it needs to be the last thing you do and everything needs to dry so that it shows up nicely. So just pulling out some color, giant scar over the surface, blurring a couple edges, looking at my photo and trying to get as accurate as possible. Then, you know, mixing it up a little. Guys, yeah, splatter paint. All that's left is to sign it. And here's how it looks after it dries. Moon floating in a starry night. I hope you've enjoyed this painting. This was a really fun one to do since, you know, I like astronomy and playing with my telescope. And I appreciate you watching this all the way through. I hope you, this inspires you to look up at the night sky and paint. For more videos, check out my website or my channel, paintingwatercolor.com. If you like this one, please subscribe or at least give me a thumbs up. Happy painting.